Welcome back to Scorecast Edix. G, and Jacko. It's about the 10th time we've done this, mm -hmm. but we're trying to be cool. <laughs> George has got the Googles. And we're doing, uh, doing cool squats. What's your favourite cool squat, Georgie? <laughs> what's, your, what's, your favorite, what's your favourite cool squat? Why should you be crying? Yeah. <laughs> dragon. Dragon. Why, why do you think the dragon's so cool? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to calm ourselves down, and then we're going to show you. <laughs> we're going to show you some uh, cool little moves and simple little tools you can use to have a little bit. You can see how fun it is. How much fun we're having with the training. Mm. It's so fun we can't even talk. And uh, that's what we're going to cover in uh, this YouTube video. When you've been working on your hips and your ankle mobility, you're then able to start to do some pretty cool single leg uh, squat variations. Things like dragon pistols, pistol squats, sissy squats, shrimp squats. Have I missed anything? Cossacks. Cossack squats. <laughs> so she show us. So pistol. If we're talking about pistols and we're talking about Cossacks, we're looking at something like this. And then a Cossack when your hips are nice and open, you're able to sit down. Things like this. <laughs> And we've got dragon pistols. Jack, we can wow. do that one. <laughs> yeah, do, do that. <laughs> Coming into here and back up. Totally felt impossible when I first ever tried to do that. Sissies or shrimps. Sissy. Balance comes an issue in these. Coming down, keeping the hips on there. And Too back easy. up. <laughs> and shrimps. Little bounce around. <laughs> Uh, something like that. Don't you do a double handed one normally? Oh, <laughs> crikey. Two hands. This is hard. Whether I'm. It's uh, making me do these without warming up. Uh, uh, yes, there we go. <laughs> so, whether you're doing any of those, we've got a number of different tools that you can use, and they apply to each and every one of them. So, we can do things like partial reps, we can do things like raising the heel, we can do things like eccentrics, we can use counterbalance weights. We're going to show you some examples and some options that you can use um, for each of these. And one of the probably the jobs is going to be best to you is like which tool is most efficient for the thing that you're working on. Um, they, these just allow them to be uh, more accessible depending on where, you, uh, where your flexibility and where your strength and mobility is at. And the tools we're going to show you are some of the best ones we find for each of those different movements. So first up, we've got um, pistol squat. So George is just using a little bit of a heel raise. One of the big things with a pistol squat is we have so much weight out in front of us with this straight leg that we tend to end up toppling backwards. Having that heel raised up ever so slightly just helps us distribute, we, uh, distri distribute our weight a little bit more evenly, gives you a little bit more feeling of having that ankle dorsiflexion, but makes that, um, that counterbalance aspect of having the leg out in front a little bit easier to cope with. So having a, a heel raise for the pistol squat is a great option. Next up, dragons, where we can go through um, raising yourselves up. So whether you think of this, I wouldn't necessarily think of this as like a partial range, but it sort of almost is in a way because one of the biggest challenges on a dragon squat or dragon pistol is being able to have this leg up off the floor. So by raising you up, you're able to go through the full motion, but it's not the same type of um, full range that you're gonna need um, compared to when you're on the floor. And all you do is gradually work the plates down, just like with the heel raise, you'd gradually reduce that heel raise. Jack is going to show us a sissy squat and we're going to use the negative phase to build strength through the range. So he's going to start standing tall, have his arms out in front and squeeze his glutes. <laughs> Hips need to be an extension throughout the movement. So we're trying not to let that happen and instead squeezing the bum, keeping the hips open. So on his toes, he's now going to let the knees come down towards the floor. He's going to fight that tension as much as possible. Maybe even add bits where he fight pauses, it. Uh, pause it. holds uh. it for even longer. I even came and up then a moves bit. a tiny bit more. Why are you Keeps being holding that tension evil lady? <laughs> Once he gets to the floor, he's not going to drop. He's going to go so softly onto the ground. So he's building strength all the way into that base position, fighting as long as he can, soft touch down to come out. He can sit back or take himself into a low squat and stand back up, obviously use your hands if you need to. And that's a great way to just build that strength through the range for your sissy squat. So the other one that we're gonna go through is our shrimp. And for the shrimp, we're gonna use a target base. So having an elevated platform means it's just gonna go through the partial range, holding that foot, sending the knee to the target behind, squeezing the glutes and standing up to the top so the hips are an extension at the top. 
Obviously, having this arm out in front is going to help distribute his weight into the right position that makes him feel easier to move. And over time, what he's going to do is lower the plates down until he can perform this movement on the floor. And we've got one more, which is our Cossack. So for the Cossack squat, we can use a external load, and you can use this as a bit of a weight bias out in front. We can also add the heel raise, which is going to help with the range of motion and dorsal flexion at the ankle. Holding the weight out in front is going to stop Jacko from falling backwards. I'm like chasing him around now. <laughs> so from there, arms are straight, and that's something to notice. Otherwise, it becomes a weighted Cossack, whereas um, if the arms are out in front, it's more of a weight bias. It's helping to pull him out in front. Yeah. Nice. That's four kilos, so it's not... You'd be surprised, you think, oh, wait, this is actually making it way easier yeah. because it's just a little bit of weight. It's providing me with a little bit of counterbalance. You know, equally, over time, we can start to get rid of that um, heel raise and feel like, oh, okay, starting to get comfortable in here, then actually maybe we can get rid of <laughs> the uh, counterbalance weight altogether. The idea being you can use a combination of some of these tools. Don't try and use them all at once try to use the thing that's most applicable for you and then gradually we're trying to wean our way off the need to use that tool as you're building up particularly the uh, mobility around our ankles and around our hips to allow us to do these cool movements uh, we find them fun and it's just a different way to challenge the lower body keep training still interesting for the lower body and have a little bit of fun so a few different tools you can use to do some what georgie says is cool squats um, and if you're interested in improving your mobility a little bit more so you can start to have fun with your training, the more range you've got, the better your body feels, but equally you're able to do, have some more fun and do some more cool things with your body, then check out the new mobility program. We've, we've got a whole series of uh, workouts and exercises and a progressive way for you over a series of weeks to build up your movement, your mobility and your strength uh, so you can start to have more fun with your training. The details are in the description below. Georgia, use one of those accents you've got for uh, the class dismissed. <laughs> no. Class dismissed. <laughs>